Get 29% off Basic, Premium, and Premium Plus with the Power Up Sale. Unlock our entire language learning system right now. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. I'm sure that everyone watching this video knows about New Year's Day and celebrates it. But do you know how we celebrate in Great Britain? In this lesson, you're going to learn about the British New Year, which we celebrate on the 1st of January. Do you know how many people gather in London to watch the New Year's fireworks? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. New Year's Eve is a big party night in Britain. People all over the country celebrate with parties and fireworks to ring in the New Year. In Scotland especially, it is a big event known as Hogmanay. When Big Ben chimes midnight to signal the start of the New Year, we join hands and sing the traditional song, Old Lang Syne, a song about friends and forgiveness. A new year is seen as a new beginning, where we can say goodbye to the year that has passed and welcome the year that is coming. It is traditional to choose a new year's resolution, and this is a goal or a change that we want to make to ourselves or our lives. Popular new year's resolutions are to lose the extra pounds put on over Christmas or to quit smoking. In Britain, and especially Scotland, there is an old superstition and custom that the first person to enter a house in the new year will bring luck with them. If the first footer, as they are called, has dark hair, it is considered extremely lucky. As New Year's Eve is a party night, it means that New Year's Day is a very slow-paced day. Public transport and store hours are limited and most people choose to stay home, relax and nurse their headaches. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Do you know how many people gather in London to watch the New Year fireworks? About 250,000 people gather every year along the River Thames to watch the fireworks. The fireworks are set off from boats along the river and also around the London Eye. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you remember the name of the song we sing to welcome the new year? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Gina. It's getting cold, there are lights and decorated trees everywhere you look. That can only mean that it's nearly the 25th of December and nearly Christmas Day. In this lesson, you're going to learn about how Christmas is celebrated in Britain. If we think of Christmas, we think of snow scenes. But do you know what the definition of a white Christmas in the UK is? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. One of the most famous Christmas traditions and the one that causes the most stress is exchanging gifts. Children get excited to see what presents Santa Claus will leave for them under the Christmas tree and leave brandy and a mince pie out for him on Christmas Eve. For adults, it means braving busy stores to find the perfect presents for those they love. But always remember, it's the thought that counts. Christmas is a time for families to gather together and central to this is the Christmas dinner. The whole family sits down together to eat a heavy meal of turkey and all of the trimmings, followed by Christmas pudding for dessert. Often, we pull Christmas crackers and inside these are terrible jokes, cheap presents and paper Christmas hats. After lunch, while everyone is waiting for the food to digest, Many people switch on the TV and watch the special Christmas programs and movies that are broadcast. The most famous of these is the Queen's Christmas Speech. It's broadcast simultaneously on the two biggest TV channels in the UK, the BBC and ITV at 3pm. And the Queen reviews the year and gives us a Christmas message that usually speaks of tolerance and forgiveness.
If you send a letter to Santa and address it to the North Pole, then it will go to the North Pole. If you address it to Santa's grotto, then instead it will be answered by his British elves. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. If we think of Christmas, we think of snow scenes. But do you know what the definition of a white Christmas in the UK is? A Christmas is considered a white Christmas in the UK if a single snowflake falls on the roof of the weather centre in London during Christmas Day. It doesn't matter how much snow the rest of the country gets; it only counts if it snows at the London weather centre. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you remember the name of the most famous Christmas program? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. After Christmas, the second biggest religious event of the year in the UK is Easter. Even for people who don't celebrate Easter as a religious observance, it is an important time of the year. The date changes every year, but it always coincides with the start of spring. In this lesson, you're going to learn about Easter and how it is celebrated. How many chocolate eggs are eaten in the UK at Easter? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. At Easter, we give each other eggs. Eggs symbolize the resurrection, a new life of Jesus Christ following his crucifixion. When this tradition started, it was bird eggs painted in bright colors that were given. Now, we give chocolate eggs to each other, and especially to children that often have even more chocolate inside. A popular activity at Easter is to hold an Easter egg hunt. Small eggs are given in an area usually a garden or public place, such as a school, and then people try to find them. The eggs can be real eggs that have been hard-boiled and painted, or small chocolate eggs. Schools will hold many events and competitions related to Easter, and one of the most famous is the Easter Bonnet Parade. For this, hats are decorated with Easter-related decorations, such as eggs, chicks and rabbits. There are egg rolling competitions where hard boiled eggs are rolled down a slide or a hill and the egg that travels the furthest without breaking apart wins. Also, there are egg decorating competitions. At Christmas, it is Santa Claus that brings the presents, but at Easter, it is the Easter bunny that brings the eggs. Chocolate figures in the shape of bunnies are popular gifts at Easter alongside the traditional eggs. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. How many chocolate eggs are eaten in the UK at Easter? Around 80 million eggs are eaten by Brits at Easter. This is particularly impressive for a country that has a population of only 63 million people. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any games similar to the ones I spoke about in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Gina. A lot of countries celebrate Christmas Day on the 25th of December. But did you know that in the UK there is another public holiday on the 26th of December called Boxing Day? In this lesson, you're going to learn about Boxing Day and why it is a special day. The 26th of December is better known in many countries as a Saint's Day. What is the name of the saint? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The origin of the name Boxing Day is not fully known, and there are many theories. Some say it is because the poor boxes in church were opened on the 26th of December. Another theory is that it is because tradesmen would collect their Christmas box of presents and gifts from their customers on the day after Christmas. Boxing Day has become one of the busiest shopping days of the year, as it is a day when the big post-Christmas sales start. 
Eager shoppers start queuing from the early hours of the morning to grab bargains. The sale at the department store Harrods is particularly famous as it will sell unique one-off items for huge discounts. For these items, it is first come, first served. Boxing Day is also a day for sport. Traditionally, it was a day for fox hunting, but this practice was banned in 2004. Some hunts still go ahead despite the ban, but others are artificial hunts when no foxes are chased or harmed. It is also a day for football fans, as a full program of football fixtures are held on Boxing Day. Many people go to football games or watch the matches from home. With so much food prepared for Christmas Day, it is inevitable that some will be left over. So Boxing Day is for eating leftovers. Turkey sandwiches, turkey salad, anything that is left over gets eaten on Boxing Day. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The 26th of December is better known in many countries as a saint's day. What is the name of the saint? The 26th of December is also St. Stephen's Day, although within the UK, it is almost exclusively known as Boxing Day. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you remember the theories as to why it is called Boxing Day? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. If you live in the UK, you will know that rhyme and what it means. If you don't, then you soon will. It refers to Guy Fawkes Day, an annual celebration on the 5th of November. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what Guy Fawkes Day is and how it is celebrated. Why did people in the UK first start to celebrate Guy Fawkes Day? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Guy Fawkes Day celebrates the failure of Guy Fawkes and his accomplices in their plot to kill King James I. In 1605, Fawkes and his friends planned to blow up the Houses of Parliament with the Protestant king inside and replace him with a Catholic monarch. However, their plot was discovered and they were arrested and later executed for treason. We celebrate Guy Fawkes Day by lighting large bonfires and setting off fireworks. The celebrations are also called Bonfire Night. People may go to organised firework displays or have smaller parties in their gardens. Fireworks are a large part of the celebrations and although the event is on the 5th of November, it isn't unusual to hear fireworks throughout October too. Another way of marking the day is by the making of a guy. A guy is a homemade dummy that is usually made to resemble Guy Fawkes himself. It used to be commonplace to see children with their guys asking for money by shouting, penny for the guy. But this tradition is not as popular in recent years. The guys are thrown onto the bonfires and burnt. The image of Guy Fawkes has become very popular in recent years due to Guy Fawkes masks being used in the film V for Vendetta and also by the online group Anonymous. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Why did people in the UK first start to celebrate Guy Fawkes Day? The celebrations of Guy Fawkes Day began because the government in 1605 enforced a public day of celebration. The public had no choice but to light bonfires and celebrate the failure of the plot. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any events or festivals that you celebrate with fireworks in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Pancake Day, or Shrove Tuesday to give it its proper name, is a Tuesday seven weeks before Easter. 
It is the last day before a period of abstinence, Lent, starts. In this lesson, you're going to learn about why it is commonly known as Pancake Day and why it is a special day in Britain. Do you know where the name Shrove Tuesday comes from and what it means? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The traditional meaning of Shrove Tuesday comes from it being the day before Lent begins. It was the last chance for people to eat whatever they chose before they began to fast and was an opportunity for them to eat whatever was left in their pantry or kitchen. We eat pancakes on Shrove Tuesday because they are easy to make and can be filled with any topping. British pancakes are made from thin batter, only a few millimeters thick, that are cooked in a frying pan. Brave chefs will flip their pancakes to ensure they're cooked on both sides, but others will use a spatula. Popular toppings include plain lemon and sugar and sweeter things such as chocolate and fruit. As well as cooking pancakes, there are many games and activities that are held in Britain. The most popular are pancake races. In these races, competitors run a short track, maybe only 100 meters or so, while flipping a pancake in their frying pan. If you drop the pancake, you have to stop and pick it up. The winner is whoever completes the race first with their pancake still intact. There is a famous race held in Oni. Participants must be housewives and wear an apron. The winner is the first to complete a 375 meter course, give their pancake to the church bell ringer and receive a kiss. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Do you know where the name Shrove Tuesday comes from and what it means? Shrove comes from the word shreve, and this means to confess. In the olden days, Shrove Tuesday would be a day of confession for Christians before Lent began. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you eat pancakes in your country? If so, are they the same as British pancakes? Leave us a comment at englishclass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Lent is a six and a half week period that leads into Easter. Its date changes every year, but it always starts in either February or March. In this lesson, you're going to learn about how Lent is observed in Britain. Do you know why the date of Lent changes every year? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday, the day before Easter Sunday. It's classed as lasting 40 days as the Sundays within that period aren't included in that count. During Lent, people who observe it for religious reasons will choose to give up something as a sacrifice. Lent is also a time for improvement. As well as sacrificing material items or food, Christians try to improve themselves and live a better life for those 40 days. For the non-religious, Lent falls within the popular period for spring cleaning, and it is seen as a period of cleaning and improving the home as well as themselves. Lent has become more than just a religious event. Its position in the calendar of being a couple of months after Christmas and immediately before Easter, both big days for overeating and eating too many sweets, makes it perfect for those on a diet too. Many people may choose to give up chocolate or sweets for Lent for dietary reasons, more so than religious reasons. Some people that fast for Lent use a Lenten calendar to track their progress through the 40 days. These are often handmade and colorful and can look more like a board game than a traditional calendar. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Do you know why the date of Lent changes every year? The date changes because Lent, as well as Easter, is tied into the lunar calendar and not the regular solar calendar. This is based on lunar phases and they are slightly shorter than a month, 
meaning that the lunar year constantly changes when put against the solar calendar. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you observe Lent or have any period of fasting in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Remembrance Day in the UK is the 11th of November and this is a day when we honour the memories of those who died fighting for their country. In this lesson, you're going to learn about how the war dead are commemorated in the UK. On the 11th of November at 11am, the UK joins together to mark the day with one action. What is that action? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Remembrance Day is the 11th of November because the armistice to mark the end of World War I was signed by the Allies and Germany at 11 a.m. on the 11th of November 1918. Originally, it was called Armistice Day, but was later renamed Remembrance Day after World War II. To mark Remembrance Day, people in the UK wear red poppies attached to their clothes, usually their coat. Due to poppies being so interlinked with Remembrance Day, it is also sometimes known as Poppy Day. The poppies are sold by the Royal British Legion, a charity that helps and supports war veterans. Throughout the country, poppy wreaths are laid at war memorials and ceremonies are held. The main ceremony to mark Remembrance Day happens at the Centre Path in Whitehall, central London, and the Queen lays a wreath there. As well as wreaths, people will place small wooden crosses to honour their family members. The chosen symbol is a poppy because during World War I, the fiercest fighting happened in Flanders, in the western part of Belgium. The towns and fields there were destroyed and no plantation survived other than poppies. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. On the 11th of November at 11am, the UK joins together to mark the day with one action. What is that action? It is a two minute silence. Sometimes even busy stores will observe the silence by refraining from serving customers for the two minutes. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any days of remembrance in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. May Day is the first day of May and it has been celebrated in England for two millennia. It is a day that is steeped in tradition and displays England's less modern side. In this lesson, you're going to learn about May Day celebrations. The first May Day celebrations were held over 2000 years ago, but by what group of people? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Although May Day is the 1st of May, since 1978 it has been observed on the first Monday of May. This day is deemed a bank holiday and the majority of people in the UK have the day off from work or school. The purpose of May Day is to celebrate the oncoming summer. Summer doesn't officially begin until June, but May Day celebrates the end of the colder weather and hope for a nice summer. May Day celebrations are associated with flowers as trees and plants begin to blossom around this time. May Day is observed more keenly in the villages and small towns of the UK. There, people will dress in traditional clothes and take part in activities such as dancing around a maypole and will demonstrate traditional dances such as Morris dancing. Also, girls will compete for the honour of being crowned the May Queen for that year. In the 17th century, May Day was banned by the then Puritan government and reinstated in 1660 with the restoration of King Charles II. Charles later amended all documents to show that he was coronated in 1649 instead of 1660. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The first May Day celebrations were held over 2,000 years ago. But by what group of people? 
It was the Romans. They celebrated the festival of Flora, the Roman goddess of flowers. It was also celebrated in many Germanic countries and developed into the May Day we celebrate today. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any celebrations similar to May Day in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. 14th of February is Valentine's Day and it is an opportunity to show your loved ones how much you care for them. In this lesson, you're going to learn about Valentine's Day in the UK. Roughly how much do the British public spend on Valentine's Day each year? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Valentine's Day used to be a day to admit your love for someone with an anonymous card. Instead of signing the card with your name, people would sign with either a question mark or the words from your secret admirer. Although this still happens, it is now more common to be upfront with your feelings. Valentine's Day comes from Saint Valentine, who is widely thought to be a 3rd century saint that died on the 14th of February. However, it is possible that there are two Saint Valentines that are linked to this day. The second Saint Valentine died in the 2nd century and is also said to have died on the 14th of February. As well as Valentine's Day cards, people also buy gifts for their loved ones. Popular gifts include chocolates, flowers or stuffed toys holding Valentine's Day hearts or flowers. Anyone can give presents, but there is a higher expectation placed on men to buy good gifts for their girlfriends than vice versa on Valentine's Day. Although Valentine's Day is traditionally a day for lovers, it is also a day to express your feelings to anyone that you love. Parents may send cards to their children, and you can even buy Valentine's Day cards for your pets. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Roughly how much did the British public spend on Valentine's Day each year? In 2011, it was calculated that the British public spend around £503 million on Valentine's Day cards and gifts each year. That can buy a lot of chocolate and flowers. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have a special day for lovers in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com Hi everyone, I'm Gina. The Queen's birthday is not her actual birthday but is the official birthday of the British Sovereign, who is the UK's head of state, the highest ranked official in the country. The date changes every year, but it is always a Saturday in June. In this lesson, you're going to learn about how the monarch's official birthday is celebrated. Queen Elizabeth II's official birthday is in June, but when is her actual birthday? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The main celebration of the official birthday is Trooping the Colour. This is a ceremony performed by many different regiments of the British and Commonwealth armies. It takes place at Horse Guards Parade and many soldiers and marching bands parade in front of the monarch. The name Trooping the Colour refers to the tradition of the colours, which are flags representing each regiment being displayed to the soldiers so that they could be recognised in battle. During Trooping the Colour, the regiments display their colours and pay tribute to the reigning monarch. The Queen's birthday also marks the publication of the Birthday Honours List. The Honours List details all of the people, both famous and civilian, that will receive honours such as knighthoods, CBEs and other awards. The list is published in the London Gazette and also newspapers across the Commonwealth. The official birthday has been celebrated in the UK since 1748. In 1908, it was moved to June from November by the then reigning monarch, King Edward VII, 
in the hope of it being held during good weather. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The Queen's official birthday is in June, but when is her actual birthday? Queen Elizabeth II's actual birthday is the 21st of April. She was born in 1926 in Mayfair, London. The official birthday is likely to remain in June in the future, even when other monarchs have been crowned. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have a special day to celebrate your head of state? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. The month of October contains the spookiest day of the year as the 31st is Halloween, a day of hauntings and fun. In this lesson, you're going to learn about Halloween celebrations in the UK. What are the origins of the name Halloween? Do you know why the day is called that? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The origins of Halloween are not completely clear. Some scholars think that it can be traced back to the Celtic harvest festivals, such as Samhain, being converted to a festival for Christians to enjoy, whereas others believe that Halloween is purely an original Christian festival. Halloween is now seen as a fun event for both adults and children. People of all ages will dress in fancy dress for parties and some workplaces, such as stores and offices, will encourage their employees to enter into the spirit of the day and allow them to dress up too. Costumes tend to be scary characters, such as witches or vampires, but can be anything. For children, Halloween is about dressing up and eating sweets. Children will wear costumes and go to the houses in the neighbourhood where they will knock on the neighbours' doors and say, trick or treat. The householder might then give the children a treat of some sweets. Not everybody likes the trick or treat tradition, however, as some houses will display prohibition signs saying, no trick or treaters. Although children generally don't play tricks anymore when not given sweets, Common tricks used to include throwing eggs at windows and toilet paper at trees. Thankfully, children aren't as mischievous and are better supervised now. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. What are the origins of the name Halloween? Do you know why the day is called that? The 1st of November is All Hallows Day, so the 31st of October is All Hallows Eve. The name has been contracted to Halloween. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you celebrate Halloween or have any similar days in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. St George's Day is on the 23rd of April and this is a special day in England because St. George is a patron saint of the country. In this lesson, you're going to learn about the meaning of St. George's Day. St. George is represented on the flag of the United Kingdom. What part of the flag comes from St. George? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Although St. George is a patron saint of England, he is not English. He was born in Turkey in the 3rd century and was a Roman soldier. He was a Christian serving under a pagan emperor and was persecuted for his beliefs by being tortured and eventually beheaded. St. George is most famous for the legend of him slaying a dragon. The legend states that he travelled to Libya to save a princess from being sacrificed to a dragon that was terrorising a village. This myth was attributed to St. George in the 12th century, so long after his death. St. George's Day is not a big occasion in England. It is not a public holiday and any events that are held are usually small community events, such as fairs or parties. You might see the cross of St. George displayed more frequently, but there are no big firework displays. Despite this, 
the legend of St. George and the infamous dragon is well known throughout England. One of the most popular pub names in England is a George and Dragon. The sign on these pubs usually has a drawing of George slaying the dragon, often in full medieval armour. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. St. George is represented on the flag of the United Kingdom. But what part of the flag comes from St. George? It is the Red Cross in the middle. This is St. George's Cross and it also makes up the flag of England. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? What are the origins of the design of your country's flag? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. In the UK, the Twelfth Night refers to the Twelfth Night after Christmas and falls on the 5th of January. In this lesson, you're going to learn why this date is of importance. Do you know what the traditional Twelfth Night drink, wassail, is made from? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The Twelfth Night is when Christmas decorations should be taken down. If any decorations remain after the 5th of January, then they should be left until next year. The superstition is that taking them down after the Twelfth Night will bring bad luck upon the house. In the olden days, it was believed that spirits lived in the greenery, such as holly and ivy, that was used to decorate the house. This greenery was bought inside during the midwinter to help the spirits, but after the Twelfth Night it was time to release them back into the countryside and their natural habitat. If they were not released, the spirits would cause havoc in the house. Now you may be thinking that 12 days after Christmas is actually the 6th of January and not the 5th, and you would be correct. However, in olden days, a day started at sunset and not at midnight. Also, day followed night and not vice versa. So by modern calendars, the 12th day is the 6th, but to our ancestors, it was the 5th. Twelfth Night used to be a day for practical jokes and plays. It is believed that Shakespeare named one of his plays Twelfth Night for this reason, and also it was first performed on the Twelfth Night. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Do you know what the traditional Twelfth Night drink, wassail, is made from? It is a cider-based drink seasoned with various spices and sometimes honey. It is especially popular in the south of England where most apples for cider are grown. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? If you decorate your house in your country, do you have any special ceremonies or traditions for taking down the decorations? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Dewi Sant, as it's known in Welsh, or Saint David, is a patron saint of Wales and St. David's Day is celebrated by the Welsh on the 1st of March. In this lesson, you're going to learn about St. David's Day. Why isn't the Welsh flag represented on the flag of the United Kingdom? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. St. David was a Celtic monk and bishop that lived in the 6th century. He helped to spread the word of Christianity across Wales. It is claimed that he lived for over a century and the day of his death was the 1st of March. St. David's most famous miracle is that while he was preaching to some followers, the ground was said to have risen up and formed a hill beneath him so that he could be seen and heard better. He also founded several monasteries in Wales during his lifetime. St. David's Day is commemorated in Wales by wearing daffodils and leeks. These are both national emblems of Wales and are closely associated with the country. They are often worn attached to a coat or hat. Some children wear the Welsh national dress of a tall black hat and long dress in red and white.
The leek is a national emblem because Saint David was said to have advised the Welsh to wear a leek in their caps when they battled the Saxons, so that they could easily distinguish friend from foe in battle. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Why isn't the Welsh flag represented on the flag of the United Kingdom? This is because Wales, unlike England, Scotland and Ireland, was never a kingdom. When the UK was formed, Wales was already part of England and was a principality instead. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? What is your country's national emblem? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. The 1st of April is April Fool's Day, a day to try and fool your friends with jokes and a day to have some light-hearted fun. In this lesson, you're going to learn about April Fool's Day in the UK. There was a famous April Fool's story about penguins published by the BBC. What do you think the story was? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. It is commonly thought that the reason why the 1st of April is a day for tricks is due to the changing of the calendar. Currently, we use the Gregorian calendar and the new year starts on the 1st of January. However, previously, the Julian calendar was used and in this calendar, a new year started on the 1st of April. When a change was made, those who still celebrated on the 1st of April were mocked and called fools. On the 1st of April, we play tricks on others and try to deceive the more gullible amongst our friends. The more outlandish these tricks and deceptions are, the better. However, this custom should only last until midday. After midday, April Fool's Day is over and tricksters shouldn't play any more tricks. April Fool's Day isn't just an event held between friends. Every year, major multinational corporations, celebrities, and media outlets also try to play tricks on the public. Every year, most major national newspapers will carry a story or two on the 1st of April that is a joke, and the game becomes trying to spot it. The Gregorian calendar was first conceived in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII but was not adopted by the UK until 1752. Delaying the change resulted in 11 days being skipped so that the calendar could run correctly. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. There was a famous April Fool's story about penguins published by the BBC. What do you think the story was? The BBC claimed that their cameras in the Antarctic had captured footage of flying penguins. It was claimed these penguins would migrate to South Africa every summer. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have a day for fooling in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. In the Northern Hemisphere, summer begins in June, and this is also the case in the UK. Midsummer's Day follows the start of summer and is marked on the 24th of June. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what Midsummer's Day means in the UK. A play written by Shakespeare is based around the midsummer time of year. Do you know what it is called? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Back in the 13th century, Midsummer's Day was celebrated on the 23rd of June, which is known as St. John's Eve. It was followed by celebrations on the 25th of June, when bonfires, feasts and general merrymaking would be held. It was celebrated in this manner until the Reformation, when England broke away from the Catholic Church during the 16th century. Lighting bonfires has become popular again in some parts of Cornwall and Scotland. 
The significance behind lighting bonfires is that they are in praise of the sun. The sun starts to become weaker and days become shorter following Midsummer's Day, and bonfires are lit to support and bolster the sun. These days, the main Midsummer's Day celebrations centre on Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument in Wiltshire, England, and during the summer solstice celebrations, the public are given additional access to the Stonehenge site so that the event can be celebrated. Thousands of people gather to watch the sunrise on the longest day. An old midsummer superstition is that any rose picked on Midsummer's Eve will stay fresh until Christmas. Also, if young girls pick a rose and repeat a specific rhyme, it is said that their true love will visit them. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. A play written by Shakespeare is based around the midsummer time of year. Do you know what it's called? It is a Midsummer Night's Dream and it is one of the most popular Shakespearean comedies and plays. The title of the play reflects the dreamlike atmosphere of the play. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Are there any events to mark the midsummer or the longest day in your culture? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone! I'm Gina. In September, we harvest the crops that have grown throughout the year and the Harvest Festival is a celebration of the food that we have cultivated in the land. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what the Harvest Festival means to the UK. The word harvest comes from the Old English word hairfest. What does hairfest mean? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Traditionally, the Harvest Festival is held on or near the Sunday of the Harvest Moon. The Harvest Moon is a full moon that is closest to the autumnal equinox. Two times out of three, this falls within September, but on those rare occasions, it occurs in October. In the UK, the main places that celebrate the Harvest Festival are churches and schools. Churches decorate with baskets of fruit and other produce and say prayers and sing hymns to give thanks for previous successful harvests and hope for continued success in the future. It is not a public holiday, but is still an important date in the calendar in the UK. Schools may hold assemblies that are similar to the church services, but they also ask students to bring food to the school. The food is then parceled up so that it can be distributed to those less fortunate as the Harvest Festival is also about helping those in need as much as possible. Although harvest celebrations can be traced back to pagan festivals, the modern Harvest Festival began in 1843, when parishioners in Cornwall were invited to a thanksgiving service by the Reverend at that time. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The word harvest comes from the Old English word hairfest. What does hairfest mean? Hairfest is the Old English word for autumn. The meaning evolved, however, and it came to mean the season for reaping and gathering grain. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any harvest festivals in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. St Andrew is a patron saint of Scotland and St Andrew's Day is celebrated on the 30th of November. It is Scotland's National Day. In this lesson, you're going to learn about St Andrew and how his day is marked. The 30th of November is a public holiday in Scotland, but it was only recently made so. In what year did the Scottish Parliament make it a bank holiday? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. St. Andrew was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ and one of the closest to Christ. St. Andrew is said to have been present at the Last Supper. 
He is the patron saint of Scotland because legend states that some of his remains were taken to Scotland during the 4th century to a town now known as St Andrews. The flag of Scotland is a white cross on an X orientation on a blue background. This cross, or the saltire, is known as the cross of St Andrew because when he was crucified he refused the regular cross and was instead bound to an X-shaped cross. Scotland's flag is said to be the oldest, most continuously used flag design in the world, but the truth of that is open to debate and difficult to prove. St Andrew's Day is a celebration of all things Scottish. In the capital city, Edinburgh, there is a week-long celebration with traditional Cayley dancing, Scottish food and bagpipe playing. Glasgow holds a big shindig or party to mark the day. Schools have special events and demonstrate things such as dancing and poetry. The 30th of November is designated as an official flag day in Scotland. This means that every building with a flagpole must fly the flag of Scotland on that day. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The 30th of November is a public holiday in Scotland, but it was only recently made so. In what year did the de-evolved Scottish Parliament make it a bank holiday? It was made a public holiday in 2006. So those north of the border get a public holiday for their patron state, but those south of the border in England and Wales do not. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Does your country have official flag days? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Advent is a period that leads into Christmas. It is an important time of preparation and expectant waiting. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what Advent means in the UK. Advent is an anglicization of the Latin word Adventus. What does Adventus mean? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year or church year and begins on the fourth Sunday before Christmas. So it always falls between the 27th of November and the 3rd of December. The religious meaning behind the Advent period is to anticipate and prepare for the second coming of Christ by anticipating and preparing for Christmas. The lighting of an Advent wreath is a common way to count down to Christmas. The wreath is made of evergreen branches and has four candles arranged around it. The candles represent the four Sundays of Advent and one candle is lit on each Sunday in Advent. Often there is a fifth candle in the centre and this last candle is lit on Christmas Day. Advent is also a countdown to Christmas for the non-religious as Advent calendars are a very popular form of confectionery. These are a type of calendar that have a door for every day of Advent. Behind each door is an item, usually chocolate, and people use them as a countdown to Christmas. The chocolates are often molded into the shape of Christmas icons, such as mistletoe and bells. Advent is a time when Christmas preparations really move up a gear. Presents are wrapped, trees are decorated, and every town and city becomes Christmassy, thanks to decorations and illuminations. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Advent is an anglicization of the Latin word Adventus. What does Adventus mean? It means coming or arrival. Advent is literally the arrival of Christmas. In the past, many loan words were anglicized to make them easier for English speakers to understand. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have any countdown periods in your country for any special days? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Mothering Sunday is a day where we pay respect to our mothers. It is more commonly known as Mother's Day in other countries. In this lesson, 
You're going to learn about the history of Mothering Sunday. Simnel cake is traditionally Mothering Sunday cake, but what is it? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Mothering Sunday is not a fixed date in the UK. It is always the fourth Sunday of Lent, so much like Lent, the date changes every year. Mothering Sunday was originally a Christian holiday and is separate from the Mother's Day celebrated in other countries. But in the UK, the two have come to have a virtually identical meaning and the two titles have become interchangeable. It is referred to as both Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day. The origins of Mothering Sunday refer to the custom of people returning to their mother church, the largest church in their area, and it was said that they had gone mothering. It also referred to servants at stately homes and mansions being allowed one day each year to visit their families, and this would fall on Mothering Sunday. The servants would return home with presents for their mothers. Nowadays, Mothering Sunday is merely a day to pay respects to and show our love for our mothers. Children, no matter their age, will send cards and flowers to their mothers. They may help out more with the household chores or even prepare breakfast in bed so that their mothers can have an easier and more relaxing day. It was in the 1950s when Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day became integrated. Retailers and merchants saw the opportunity to make some money and relentlessly promoted Mother's Day. Now a lot of British people don't know there is a difference. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Simnel cake is a traditional Mothering Sunday cake, but what is it? It is a fruit cake that is decorated with a layer of marzipan. On top of this layer, 11 marzipan balls are placed to represent Christ's 12 apostles minus Judas, who betrayed Christ. Now it is sometimes eaten at Easter too. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you have Mothering Sunday or something similar to pay respects to your mother in your country? Leave us a comment at englishclass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Unlike Mothering Sunday, Father's Day in the UK follows the similar conventions to Father's Day in the rest of the world. It's a day to celebrate and honour our fathers. In this lesson, you're going to learn about Father's Day in the UK. When did Father's Day reach prominence in the UK? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. Father's Day is a regular event and is always held on the third Sunday in June. It isn't a public holiday, but it's a special day for the family nonetheless. The day originated in the US in 1910 as a complement to the American take on Mother's Day. For Father's Day, children give gifts to their fathers. Schools, especially primary schools, may give their pupils time to make a card or small present during class time. Other popular gifts are traditionally masculine items such as neckties or gadgets and boys' toys. British retailers stock Father's Day cards and gifts in anticipation of the day. As well as gifts, children might treat their fathers to a day out or event. Many places have Father's Day specials, so he can be treated to a meal at the stadium of his favourite football club, taken to lunch on a steam train, or given a more practical gift, such as flying lessons, or a spin around a racetrack in a racing car. Father's Day is always the third Sunday in June, but a major UK retailer listed it as a fourth Sunday in their 2014 calendars in error. All defective calendars were recalled and replaced at great expense to the retailer. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. When did Father's Day reach prominence in the UK? Father's Day is a relatively new event as it only came across the pond in the very late 60s and only really took hold in the 70s. Heavy promotion made it soar during the 90s. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you celebrate Father's Day in your country? If so, is it also on the third Sunday in June? Leave us a comment at englishclass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. 
everyone, I'm Gina. The Grand National is one of the highlights of the sporting calendar in the UK. It is an annual steeplechase and the most prestigious horse race in the country. In this lesson, you're going to learn about why the Grand National is so important. The Grand National is held every year, but what was special and unique about the race in 1993? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The Grand National is a horse race held annually at Aintree Racecourse in Liverpool. It has been running since 1839. The course is four miles long and has 30 fences, making it one of the toughest horse races in the world and far tougher than more conventional courses. Some of the fences, such as Beecher's Brook, are almost as famous as the race itself. The Grand National is the one day when even those that don't gamble may place a bet. It is popular amongst the general public and it is the busiest day of the year for bookies. The Grand National is the most valuable horse race in Europe and in 2013 it had a prize fund of just under a million pounds. It is watched by an estimated 600 million people across 140 countries. The race is, however, not without controversy. Due to the harsh demands of the course and the fences, the horse mortality rate for the Grand National is far higher than for other races. Every year there are many protests about the alleged cruelty of the race, and the race organisers have responded to the criticism by modifying fences and moving the start line. Some of the winners of the race have become famous in their own right. In the 1970s, a horse called Red Rum won the race three times, and his death in 1990 made the front page of the newspapers. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. The Grand National is held every year, but what was special and unique about the race in 1993? It was unique because it was the only time that the race has been declared null and void. The starting tape became tangled around the jockeys on two separate occasions and a false start was declared. Some jockeys that were able to start the race thought the officials trying to stop them were protesters and so carried on. The race was considered void and bets refunded. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Do you know of any other prestigious horse races? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. Wimbledon is the most famous tennis tournament in the world. It takes place every June in a suburb of London that is also called Wimbledon. In this lesson, you're going to learn about why Wimbledon is so famous and prestigious. How long was the longest ever match held at Wimbledon and how many matches were played? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The Championships Wimbledon, to give it its full title, is the oldest tennis tournament in the world and one of the four Grand Slam tournaments that make up the yearly tennis calendar. Of these four majors, Wimbledon is the only one still played on a grass court, as is traditional. Wimbledon is a unique feature of the tennis calendar and is different to the other Grand Slams. All players must adhere to a strict dress code and wear only white. There are no advertising hoardings around the court, so it is more traditional and less commercialised than other tournaments. Wimbledon is also celebrated by the spectators in a unique fashion. It is during the English summertime when, in theory at least, it will be warm and sunny. It means that tennis fans can watch the tennis and also eat the popular English summer delicacy, strawberries and cream. There is usually a royal presence at Wimbledon too as a member of the royal family will be present at some games of the tournament. Wimbledon's most famous court is Centre Court, and this is only used during the two weeks of Wimbledon. It was fitted with a retractable roof in 2009 so that rain and hot weather won't affect play. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. How long was the longest ever match held at Wimbledon and how many matches were played? It was a marathon of a match that lasted for 5 hours and 12 minutes 
and 112 games were played. Win or lose, the competitors must have needed a long soak to ease their muscles after they had finished. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? What famous sporting events are held in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gina. The Notting Hill Carnival happens every year in August in the Notting Hill area of London. It is a colourful celebration and the biggest carnival in Europe. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what happens during the carnival and the history behind it. Food is a big feature of the festival. Do you know what the most popular foods are? We'll show you the answer at the end of this video. The carnival in its current form was first held in 1966 and runs over three days. The August bank holiday Monday and the two days preceding it. Over one million people attend the festival and the main event, a colourful parade, winds through 20 miles of London streets. The carnival began as a small-scale local festival arranged by the West Indian community. From those humble beginnings, it has evolved into a full-blooded Caribbean carnival. Highlights of the weekend include a kids' day with a costume contest and a parade where floats and thousands of people walk through the streets. One of the key features of the carnival is music. Steel bands line the streets and play and their music can be heard for miles. There are also displays of other types of music, such as calypso and soccer, and in recent years, professional and international artists have begun to play the carnival in increasing numbers. When the carnival first started, it was without approval from the authorities. It wasn't until 1987 that the police began to take a conciliatory approach with the carnival instead of simply trying to shut it down. And now I'll give you the answer to the earlier quiz. Food is a big feature of the festival. Do you know what the most popular foods are? Stores at the festival sell many types of Caribbean food. The most popular and famous dishes are jerk chicken, curried goat and rice, and peas. How was this lesson? Did you learn something interesting? Are there any festivals celebrating a foreign culture in your country? Leave us a comment at EnglishClass101.com and we'll see you in the next lesson.